Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Kenny, and welcome to ESPN Classics Top 5 Reasons You Can't Blame. In this show, we'll examine the case against Matt Leiner. As a sophomore and junior, the USC quarterback scaled heights of excellence seldom achieved in college football. He won a Heisman Trophy and led the Trojans to two national championships while losing just one of his 26 starts. Then he made what seems to have been a very expensive mistake. Instead of entering the 2005 NFL Draft, where he was odds-on to be the first pick, Leinert decided he liked college life too much to leave so soon. Oh, what a difference that year made. Not only did Leinert's decision to stay in school cost him millions of dollars, its effect on his pro career is incalculable. In this show, we'll stand up for the quarterback and count down the top five reasons you can't blame Matt Leinert for returning for his senior season at USC. But first, let's take a look at the case against him. Leinert gets some heat, goes down into the corner, touchdown! Winner, winner. This guy always found a way to win. He's in the end zone, touchdown USC! Matt Leinert is one of the greatest college quarterbacks of all time. Leinert bumps it, going deep. Kerry Colbert, got it! The championships, the Heisman Trophy, the winning streak, Let's dream up of who else goes in that class, because I'm they're not immediately coming to mind. Trojans on three! One, two, three! Trojans! As a sophomore in 2003, Leinert stepped into the most glamorous position in football and promptly lit up the scoreboard. Touchdown, USC. Well, that's exactly what Pete Carroll wanted for his young quarterback. That season, the Trojans' main man passed for 38 touchdowns and led USC to a co-national championship. His three touchdown passes in a 28-14 victory over Michigan in the Rose Bowl earned him the MVP award. He may not be the most talented quarterback that ever walked out on a field, but I tell you what, he thinks he is, and he can make other people believe it too, and that's an amazing quality. The guy really has what some people think is a photographic memory. Leinert looking for Bush, throws, got him. He's a very poised quarterback. He's a really smart quarterback too at the same time, which I think a lot of people take for granted. As a junior, Leinert was brilliant again, winning the Heisman Trophy as he led the Trojans to an undefeated season. Every pass he threw was perfect on the money. He was the reason behind the calls. His leadership was unquestioned. His focus on the game, studying our stuff as well as the defense, he's just taking that so serious that it's allowed us to do so many things with him. In the 2005 Orange Bowl, USC nailed a second straight national title routing Oklahoma 55-19. Leinert won another MVP award, throwing for 332 yards and an Orange Bowl record five touchdowns. Touchdown! And a new Orange Bowl record five touchdown passes. Almost everyone expected him to declare for the pros. No question. You had to believe that that was the last time you'd see Matt Leinert in a USC uniform. What else could he accomplish if you break it down? The only thing left for him to do was fail. He was as ready as ready gets to be the number one draft pick. But 10 days later, Leinert announced he had other plans. I will be coming back for my fifth year. I could not believe it when I heard he was staying. How could anybody not go? You gotta go. It boggled the mind. Who would make a choice like that? He could never live up to what happened the year before. He was the it guy. His decision to come back threw caution to the wind. He's looking at throwing millions of dollars out the window and risking injury. On any given play, your whole life can change, not just your career, but your whole life, because you get injuries that you just don't recover from. You can't risk injury. You can't risk bad play. Any business person in their right mind goes in the NFL. He could only go down, in a sense. If you don't come back and win every game and win the Heisman Trophy and win a national championship, then you've made a mistake. He had raised the bar higher than he could jump over again. Leonard lets it go. Incomplete. Almost intercepted. Although Leonard's performance fell off as a senior, the Trojans extended their winning streak to 34 games. But in the most exciting BCS title game to date, USC was upset by Texas 41-38. 
Among the mourners was former offensive coordinator Norm Chow, who a year earlier had left the Trojans to join the Titans of the NFL. Chow knew what Leonard was comfortable with. When you replace that, he's starting over again with this whole kind of comfort situation and learning process. On the field, the junior season was stronger statistically for Leonard. He won the Heisman Trophy. They won the national championship. Without Norm Chow, there goes the Heisman Trophy and there goes the spotlight. Matt Leonard's just totally off his game today. Leonard became the subject of intense revisionism. Questions about his arm strength stemmed from elbow surgery he had undergone after his junior season, and red flags were raised across the NFL. The longer he played, the more they had to scrutinize. And that's when it started coming up about his arm strength. That's when it started coming up about, wonder if he is the best quarterback. Well, that's what, the fifth time now he's been high and wide. I think people saw his arm, maybe, and they said, well, it's not as good as this guy's arm. His spiral was not quite as tight as it was his junior year. Does he have arm problems now? Did he recover? I think these are all things that he exposed himself to. In the 2006 NFL Draft, the first team to select a quarterback was Tennessee with the third pick. Despite Chow's relationship with Liner, the Titans bypassed the USC star for the man who beat him in the Rose Bowl, Vince Young. His mentor, the man that gave him the tools to succeed, is now in the NFL, and he didn't pick him? Couldn't convince the guys there to pick him? When Leinert was selected 10th by the Arizona Cardinals, the thud of his fall from grace was heard from coast to coast. He described the draft day experience as maybe the worst day of his life. Spot after spot gets called, and he sits and waits. That must have been agonizing, and I think very embarrassing for him. The poor guy who was supposed to be chosen high, sitting there, everybody in the green room's disappearing. You don't want to be the last guy in that room. And I, I would think in the back of his mind, he's seeing cha-ching, 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 you know, the money machine going downhill, too. Leinert's choice to stay at USC for another season almost certainly cost him millions. In 2005, Alex Smith, the number one pick, signed a contract that guaranteed him $24 million. In 2006, Leinert's guarantee was $14 million. I think he was embarrassed. I think he wishes he'd gone. You look at the Arizona Cardinals, and it's just, it's been a wasteland for 30-plus years. He's destined to live with the legacy that is the black hole that is quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals. His first reaction, he admitted to me, was, oh, no, not only do I fall in the draft, but Arizona Cardinals. What is happening to my world? One of the worst franchises ever. Uh, they've been run terribly. They've been cheap. Uh, they've done everything wrong. I understand you want to stay in college and you want to hang out with your buddies, you want to live that Hollywood lifestyle, but when it loses you 10 million bucks, is it really worth hanging out with Nick Lachey to lose 10 million dollars? I don't think so. I can blame him all the way. I mean, you don't turn down an opportunity to be the number one pick because you just don't know what can happen from year to year. As time goes on, he's going to regret that decision. Well, now you've seen the case against Matt Leinart. Now, before we lay out the top five reasons you can't blame him for returning to USC, here are a few that didn't make the final cut. He may not have been number one. Popular wisdom to the contrary, Leinart was not a lock to go first in the 2005 draft. You can never tell how your stock is going to fare during that NFL evaluation period at the end of the season. Anything can happen, and I would, I, would, I would count on that, and I'm sure he was advised as such by people. It's like, you're the number one pick overall right now. There's nothing says you'll be that by April. After his junior season, everyone just absolutely decided that he'd be the number one pick, and I spent uh, time with the 49ers behind the scenes. They were not going to take him number one whether he was eligible for the draft or not. With things being as uncertain as they are, that's just another reason why you stay. Because there is certainty in staying. You are going to play for a national championship. You are going to be hounded by hot Southern Cal co-eds. Our other best of the rest, insurance. Like most top college athletes, Leinert was insured against career-ending injury. I think that makes it easier to go out and play that last year and to play with abandon, which he plays with. He's not a guy who is protecting himself out there. Leinert's in trouble. Takes off. A lot of room. Now finally tracked down. Not only was Leinert covered against injury, another policy, also taken out by his family, gave him some downside protection in the 2006 draft. Matt Leinert had a loss of value policy. 
If he did not get selected in the top 15 picks, he was then able to make up the difference between whatever he was going to get guaranteed versus what he would have had guaranteed as the number one pick in 2005. He was covered. So he made a shrewd deal to get the insurance. Why not come back with another national championship? It made perfect sense. The worst case scenario is that you're a millionaire. When we Scar tissue. Despite winning the Heisman in 2004, Leinert was playing with an injured throwing elbow. I don't think you can blame him for not coming out because he had a question about his arm. His left elbow had scar tissue. He played the whole season with it. Line it from the side, uh, use that arm again, close this one, the ball's caught. He had to have surgery, and I think his arm strength needed to be improved. He wasn't going to be able to go to that combine, and he wasn't going to be able to throw for teams. He knew that his body needed that break, that he was not ready to go and, and work out for people. It's a red flag, you know, and, and the more red flags they see in a guy, especially, again, we're talking about a, you know, very, very small pool of players with a lot of money at stake. And so if they can think of more reasons not to take a guy, they don't take him. It's just not something you can hide from the scout. They can tell when a guy's favoring his elbow, uh, and that would have a huge impact on whether you went number one or number 10 or number 15. Are you starting to change your thinking? Maybe reason number four will help. San Francisco was on the rocks. From 2003 to 2005, no NFL team had a worse record than the 49ers 13 and 35. I think he may not have just wanted to play for the 49ers because the franchise was in such a state of disrepair. They're expected to be one of the dregs of the NFL probably over the next two or three years. His parents, his dad, Bob, looked at that offensive line and saw all the quarterbacks were getting killed back there. And that did not appeal to them. It, it almost seemed like USC had more talent than the Niners did at that point. He'd have gotten all the money, and San Francisco would have, would have bankrolled him and just set him out to be destroyed. He's up in San Francisco. Sure, he's got the cash, but, I mean, he's running for his life every Sunday. This could be a blessing in disguise for Matt Liner to end up with the Arizona Cardinals. Arizona's a pretty good place to be for a young quarterback. I mean, you've got two 1,000-yard receivers in Bolden and Fitzgerald. You have a proven all-pro running back in Edger and James and a two-time MVP quarterback to learn from. The key is having a guy like Kurt Warner, NFL MVP, Super Bowl MVP, guy that's done it all, to see how he goes about his approach with the day-to-day -day activities of being an NFL quarterback. History of NFL is replete with right guys at the right time in the right team. Big man on campus. Leinert, a former wallflower, couldn't leave paradise. When he becomes the BMOC at USC, this is the first time in his life. This is a guy who's a fat kid, had big, thick glasses. He is the show. He is the man. He can't walk down campus without getting five phone numbers handed in his hand. He has a really heart-wrenching story about being fat and cross-eyed, and it's like the, the ugly duckling that becomes the swan. What a that? Matt Liner. You're talking about arguably the biggest celebrity in the history of college football in the nation's second largest market. When I was in college, I couldn't get into half the clubs that he owned space in. It was kind of like we were the kings of L.A., honestly, and, and Matt was, you know, at the top of his game. In his last semester at USC, Leinert's academic schedule consisted of one class, ballroom dancing. If you understood how he was living, you would have stayed, too. Everybody loves him, from directors to actors, and especially the actresses. So now, why leave? Why would he leave? He was given VIP treatment. He was hanging out with all the celebrities. You could always see him with Nick Lachey, Paris Hilton, all of that sort of young Hollywood set. He was instantly accepted into. His life couldn't get any better than living in Los Angeles and being the king of that town. Yeah, you know, it's a tough place to uh, to leave when you're when you're at the height of it. Matt is, for all intents and purposes, the professional quarterback of Los Angeles. Now he is one of the probably the more eligible bachelors in this town at this point. People would look at Nick Lachey and say, 
hmm, you're living deliciously. But then he looked over at Matt Leiner and he was like, no, there's the guy who's got it all. The money will come, but your senior year as BMOC, as the big mother on campus, will never come again. It is a wonderful thing to be a great player at USC. It's something you don't walk away from easily. And I fully understand why Matt Leiner would want that last year, even if it was just to learn the tango. If you haven't bought into our argument yet, maybe reason number two will help. Carson Palmer. Leinert's friend and predecessor at USC, Palmer also blew off the NFL for another season of college football. Touchdown, Trojan! Before Leinert has to make this decision, it's becoming apparent that Carson Palmer is going to be great. And so, what better model to replicate? They're friends, and uh, Carson's uh, word to him was, you know, relax, learn. Matt said to me that he bought into that, and he understands the, the, the wisdom there. Leinert's senior year allowed him time to grow as a quarterback. One game in which his learning curve spiked was a 34-31 victory at Notre Dame. They needed a big, big completion, and he wound up throwing a ball that, frankly, you would have needed four years of college just to figure out the trajectory on the ball. Fourth down and nine. The pass is caught. Down the sideline, 40, 30, 20, and tackled at the 12-yard line. One of the things that Matt Liner did with that, that last year was he studied a lot of NFL tape. He studied NFL quarterbacks where he hadn't done it in the past, and that helped him prepare. Leinert changing his play. Pass. Touchdown. Another year of, of schooling, uh, another year of grooming, especially in that system. It's just another step in the developmental process for a quarterback. The list of elite NFL quarterbacks that played their senior season includes Tom Brady, Donovan McNabb, and Peyton Manning. I want to come back from my senior year and be able to slow everything down a little bit. I would stay in and, and like Peyton did, and I would stay in and learn and continue to learn. You can't know enough in this game, and uh, especially at our position. You could go down the list, John Elway, uh, Joe Montana, any great quarterback you want to cite. Almost all the greatest quarterbacks the last 15, 20 years basically spent four years in a program. Of the many failed NFL quarterbacks who came out early, three notables are Achilles Smith, Andre Ware, and Ryan Leaf. Ryan Leaf is, is the bust of all busts. He came out early, he took the money. And I think if you compare the two, Ryan probably wishes he'd have went back to Washington State. You know, every now and then that extra year season can do you some good. There's clearly a reason guys succeed after four years of school and guys who come out in the NFL after three years of school are just not gonna, are not gonna make that top echelon. Matt Leiter has scored and the Trojans will win the ball game. Chasing history. And they throw the bush. Look out. Look out. As only the second quarterback in a quarter of a century to lead his team to consecutive national titles, Leinert had a chance to do what no quarterback had ever done. You know, there's just something special we have going on here, and to do a three-peat, I don't think that's ever been done before. Woo! Well, there's a challenge on the table. He had a chance to be part of a great legacy at USC, one of the greatest college football teams of all time. I felt like we had another shot to play for another national championship, and, and um, we were excited to have him back. Being the man to lead a college football team to unprecedented heights of three consecutive championships, you will make history. That's something that Carson Palmer, Joe Montana, Terry Bradshaw, Roger Stiley, you name any of the great quarterbacks, uh, collegiate or professional quarterbacks, uh, they couldn't claim that. Had they won the Texas game, he's 38 and 1, he's a Heisman Trophy winner, and he's a three time national champ. Uh, and uh, that's unheard of. He was in it for what the sport's about to grab the gusto, the exhilaration, that high you can't get. Only Matt could get it that year. No one else in college football history could grab that high. Play action for Liner, throwing across the middle. Garrett's got it inside the five, still on his feet, dives towards the goal line. He's in. Touchdown, USC. Matt Liner to Dwayne Garrett. That would have been something that would have etched his name into the annals of college football history forever. 
trying to be the only college football player besides Archie Griffin to win two Heisman trophies. You also can uh, leave your final imprint saying, hey, I did something nobody else was able to do. Can't blame Leonard because no one's ever done it. And as a quarterback, I kind of see why he, he did come back and, and try to accomplish that. I don't, I don't blame him. I think those are, those are pretty prestigious accomplishments that he had in mind, and he came darn close. Texas 41, USC 38. Well, it was quite a ride. Was one more year of college worth it for Matt Liner? Not everything can be measured in terms of money, and for his sake, you can only hope he thoroughly enjoyed his senior year. I'm Brian Ketty. Thanks for joining us.